Pajula who gives is non-existent and the Pajula who receives is non-existent. For many reasons of this kind, it is said that the thing given, the donor and the recipient do not exist. Question. If. Among all the dharmas. The gift has as the true nature as its characteristic. If it is indestructible, non-perishable, unborn, and uncreated, why do you say that the three elements of which it is constituted, namely gift, donor and recipient are broken and non-existent? Answer. If ordinary people think they see a donor, a recipient and a gift, that is an error and a wrong view. They are reborn in this world and enjoy happiness here. But when their merit is exhausted, they go backward. This is why the Buddha wants to lead the Bodhisattva to follow the true path and obtain the true fruit of reward. The true fruit of retribution is Buddhahood. To destroy wrong views, the Buddha says that the three things, donor, beneficiary, and gift do not exist and are truly indestructible. Why? Because from the very beginning, all dharmas are absolutely empty. For innumerable reasons of this kind, they are non-existent, and that is what is meant by perfection of the virtue of generosity. 6. Generosity and the other virtues. Moreover, if the Bodhisattva practices the virtue of generosity, he will be able to give birth to the six virtues, and this will then be the perfection of the virtue of generosity. 1. Generosity and the virtue of generosity. How does generosity engender the virtue of generosity? Generosity is lower, middling, or higher. From the lower generosity comes the middling generosity and from the middling generosity comes the higher generosity. Giving food and other gross objects with gentleness is lower generosity. Advancing in the practice of generosity and giving garments and other precious objects is middling generosity, the result of lower generosity. Progressing in the generous motivation without sparing anything. Giving one's head, one's eyes, one's blood, one's flesh, one's kingdom, one's wealth, one's wife, and children unreservedly, this is higher generosity, coming from middling generosity. Gifts practiced by Sakyamuni in his Jatakas. Lesser Gifts Thus, when the Buddha Sakyamuni produced the Bodhi mind for the first time, he was a great king called Kaungming seeking Buddhahood, he practiced generosity more or less. When he took on a new existence, he was the master potter who gave bath utensils and honey syrup to another Buddha Sakyamuni and his Sangha. Then when he was reborn, he was the wife of a great merchant, who offered a lamp to the Buddha Kiaochenjo. Various deeds of this kind are called lesser gifts of the Bodhisattva. Middling Gifts In his previous existences, the Buddha Sakyamuni was a merchant's son who gave a garment to the Buddha Tayin Cheng and built 90 stupas to him for his Peri Nirvana. Then, when he was reborn, he was the great king who offered to the Buddha Chaitsu garlands made of the seven jewels. Finally, when he was reborn, he was the great merchant who offered to the Buddha Miao Mao an excellent palace and lotuses made of the seven jewels. Deeds of this kind are called middling gifts of the Bodhisattva. Higher Gifts In a previous existence, the Buddha Sakyamuni was a recluse who, seeing the grace and beauty of the Buddha Kiyauchen threw himself at the feet of this Buddha from the top of a high mountain. Then, with peaceful body, he stood to one side. He was also the Bodhisattva Chong Cheng Haikian who offered his body as a lamp to the Buddha Jeu Kaangtu. One various deeds of this kind, where the Bodhisattva sacrifices his body to offer it to the Buddhas, are the higher gifts of the Bodhisattva. These are the three gifts of the Bodhisattva. It is the same also when the Bodhisattvas, from their first production of Bodhi mind, make gifts to beings. First, they give food. Then their generous intentions increasing, they give them the flesh of their body. First, they give all kinds of excellent drinks. Then, their generosity increasing, they give them their bodhis blood. First they give them paper, ink, and canonical texts, then they give the Dharma teachers the fourfold offering of garments, robes, food and drink. Finally, 
having obtained the Dharmakaya, they preach all kinds of sermons to countless beings, thus practicing generosity of the Dharma. It is by means of such progressions that, from the virtue of generosity, there ensues an increase of the virtue of generosity. 2. Generosity and the Virtue of Morality How does the generosity of the Bodhisattva give rise to the virtue of morality? The Bodhisattva says to himself that, if he does not give anything to beings, he will be poor in the following existence. Because of this poverty, thoughts of stealing will arise in him. In the course of these thefts, he will commit murder. As a result of his poverty, he will have insufficient pleasure. Since these pleasures are insufficient, he will engage in illicit love-making. Because of his poverty, he will be a man of low condition. Fearful of the fact of this lowly condition, he will speak falsehoods, etc. Thus in the course of his poverty, he will commit the ten bad paths of action. One on the other hand, if he practices generosity, he will be reborn wealthy, and having riches, he will not commit sins. Why? Because one has no needs, then the five objects of enjoyment are assured. The snake, the frog, and the rat one. In a previous existence, T.I. Pota was once a snake. This snake lived in a pool in friendship along with a frog and a tortoise. In time, the water of the pool dried up completely, but there was nobody the snake could blame for the famine and distress. However, he sent the tortoise to call the frog intending to eat the latter. But the frog sent the tortoise back with this stanza. When one becomes poor, one forgets previous dispositions. One forgets earlier values. Eating becomes the main thing. Remember my words and repeat them to the snake. The frog will never return to you. If one develops generosity, one will become rich in future existences and never have needs then one will be able to keep morality and avoid all these sins. Therefore generosity can engender the virtue of morality. Furthermore, generosity leads to the alleviation of the bonds of immorality. It increases the mind of morality and brings about its strengthening. Thus generosity is the cause and condition that advances morality. Furthermore, the Bodhisattva who gives always feels sentiments of goodwill and compassion towards his beneficiary. Detached from riches, unsparing of his own goods, how could he steal? Full of loving-kindness and compassion towards his recipient, how could he have the intention to kill? This is how generosity impedes immorality and gives rise to morality. By practicing generosity, all thoughts of miserliness are suppressed, and henceforth morality, patience, zeal, and the other virtues are readily practiced. The Gift of Manjusri When Zhou Che Li was once a bhiksu a long time ago these are long kalpas. Having gone to a village to beg alms, he succeeded in filling his bowl with sweet cookies. Of a hundred flavors. In the town, a little boy, 